Hello, and thank you for joining me at Karat Spots today. Today, I'd like to go through step by step the process of me making my three sided food dishes. Um, it's a really practical shape, about 15 centimeters across, uh, has a rolled rim, and, um, and then it's altered at the end to make a triangle shape, a rounded triangle shape. The start is pretty much the same as you'd see with any bowl. I'm basically bringing the clay up and I'm forming that basic bowl shape. Uh, one thing at this stage to keep in mind, you see I might keep, I keep going back here with my fingers to the base of that bowl and keeping it collared in because I don't want it to spread out. Any amount of base that spreads out beyond what you need is just more that you have to trim later, so I try to avoid that. I'm getting the basic shape with my fingers. And now I'm pulling out the cow's tongue. And if you notice, I'm using slip instead of water for this whole process. I place my fingers on the outside, pressing against the rib, and then I bring everything up slowly. And I'm using not the edge of the rib, but the flat or the rounded, ed the rounded surface of that rib to tighten that clay up. Now I added just a little bit of water with a brush to the rim. I'm about to roll it over. And I'm thinning the rim a little bit so it'll roll a little bit more compact shape. When you roll that rim over, the best advice I can give, it, it takes some practice. Oh, all right. The number one reason why not to wear a watch when you're throwing pots. So, excuse me, and give me a second to take my watch off here. Um, this is not a lost cause. Um, in fact, some of the times this happens for whatever reason, and sometimes these turn out to be the most interesting of the lot. So, um, I have people specifically choose these because they have a little bit more interest in the lip. But So, I'm, I'm going to try and salvage it here, and we'll see where it goes. So, you're using this rib. You see the rounded surface of that rib to compress that clay outward from the center and then work your way back into the center and I'll come back out from the center one more time because what you're really trying to do is bring clay from the center and that creates more tension farther up on the wall so there's less likeliness it's going to be loose and fall in on you or fall down on you and then I just push it in on three sides at the end. And one thing you want to be careful of is pushing in too far or not enough. I pushed in a little too far there. Normally it wouldn't have been too far, but because I had that bit of a mistake there, that stretched the upper edges of that bowl a little bit more than I'd hoped. But it was easily fixed, and this bowl came through the firing just fine. Now if you go too far when you uh, push those edges in, sometimes when they're wet, they'll fall in on you. If they don't, um, you can adjust them later as the pot gets a little bit more firm. And in fact, you probably will have to go back at some point and, and sort of re-bend those sides in order to keep the proper shape because the pot does rebound a bit as it dries and you'll end up needing to go back and adjust those angles and adjust those uh, the de degree of bend that you have okay again so you can see I'm using slip here it keeps me clean and it keeps me from having a wet splash pan so I'm trying to throw fairly thin to begin with keeping that bottom again so that the bottom of the pot is the diameter that I want and I don't have to trim any extra. F compress that bottom and work your way up to the top using the rounded surface, not the edge of the rib. Going up to thin the lip again. This time hopefully I won't catch it on my watch. 
So you just go around like three or four times, just thinning that and extending it up a little bit, and then you just grab it and fold it over. And it's really important to do this. You know, I think the best way that I have thought of as far as timing is, is to take a deep breath, and then as you exhale for three to five seconds, just flip that lid over without hesitation. You bring clay out from the center, and then this is one of the things that's such a useful uh, why this rib is such a useful shape is you can use that forward edge of the rib and you can push that in under your finger and create the really deep divot just under the folded lip or the rounded over lip. And that's probably one of the best uh, characteristics that the tool has that you can make use of uh, for decorating or uh, creating interest in your pots. Lift it off the wheel here. All right, again, um, you can see I only have those dry trimmings because I that's how my, I use my splash pan. I, I fill my splash pan with trimmings, and then I go dump it out. I never have to worry about all the slop and everything. All the slop goes into the water bucket because I use very little water when I'm throwing. I find the slip works really well. bring it out, a quick compression on the lip, slip on the inside and the outside. It depends how forgiving your clay is. This clay is pretty rough and just generally large particle and it comes apart easily. That's another reason why I use the slip instead of water because it will crack right away if water gets in there and sits. But um, you want to make sure that the walls are evenly wet with the slip on both the inside and the out. And you can see I'm putting slip on the outside and then I rub a little bit of slip so I've got a little excess on the rib before I put it into the pot. And that guarantees I have enough slip and slide to make it to the top without getting a catch. That's the first time it goes in. It'll go in one more time and you'll notice when I bring the rib in the next time and use it, I'm not wetting it with slip. I want it uniformly dry on the inside. The really important part is not to get at that point any sort of wet spots on the inside because that'll create an uneven friction and you will get a lopsided pot out of it. So this time I'm just wetting the outside. I'm wiping the excess off there and from the inside to the outside I'm pulling that clay out and then I tilt that rib up to use the edge to create the undercut. And If you do this right the, the pot walls stay really nice and tight and they don't try and sag or do anything weird on you um, as is would normally happen when you try to undercut like that and make because it's kind of a weak shape. And I'm using the uh, the Tombow measuring tool to measure the out, absolute outside edge of those pots, uh, not the inside where it comes in. And as I said before, I'm exaggerating the bend a little bit towards the end to make that triangle because it will rebound. And I'll probably still have to go back and adjust it later. All right, so since I walked you through the steps on the previous examples, uh, this last one, I'm just going to talk about the rib in general. Um, the cow's rib or cow's tongue rib is really useful for uh, throwing non-plastic clay and stone, like, like porcelain bodies and things like that, single stone porcelain and others. Um, and you'll find that... Uh, it will allow you to throw objects that you normally wouldn't be able to throw because it compresses as it brings things out for you rather than stretching things like a normal rib would using the edge. So it's important to use the rounded surface of that rather than the edge when you're pulling up. And, um, and then the 
curve at the end and that edge gives you all kinds of options for creating uh, steps and undercuts in your pots as you're forming them. It's very useful, really useful. Um, it's hard to... I, I just couldn't do my work without one of these. And the originals, um, I have the all the originals of these ribs. I bought them and they're wood. Uh, and I adjusted them, and I've made a couple and, and adjusted them. That's Making them is the best because you can adjust them as you go. Um, and buying them, they're actually quite expensive. I think one this size here from um, the person who makes them best, I think one of those is about $80 for one tool. And as it's wood and you're using it in water, they tend to degrade over time if you're not careful, very careful, even if you're careful sometimes. So what I did was I took my wooden rib... Uh, I made a plaster mold of it, and I've used this uh, dentist's resin, uh, which is basically, you can see it's pink. It's made for, you know, making dentures. It's the gums. <laughs> and uh, I use that, and I pour it in the mold, and it's got the right amount of firmness and the right amount of flex for these ribs. It mimics wood pretty well, so... I have a, a rib that pretty much lasts forever. It, although they slowly do wear down, I can just pour another one when I'm, when I'm ready. And I think that's about it for today. If you found it useful, uh, please hit the like button and subscribe. I hate to be that guy, you know, but uh, yeah, please do that. And um, we'll see you around next time. Uh, I've got another two or three videos coming out where I'm making some of these smaller dishes and and then one video of trimming them which will come up in the next uh, maybe once every week uh, for the next few weeks so thank you for joining me and I will see you around <laughs>